Okay, today we are going to take a look at a really off the beat farm that doesn't get much of attention because of its placement. It sits in what I call the Bermuda Triangle of Gettysburg, which is between Benners Hill, Wolf's Hill, and Culp's Hill. And it was used as a launching pad for a Confederate attack upon Culp's Hill on July 2nd of 1863. It's one of the older farms in Gettysburg, and we'll talk a little bit about the history of the farm, what took place here on the afternoon of July 2nd, 1863. As we look at the property that was well over 280 acres in 1863. Again, this is private property, and there's really no way to get to or from the farm. I happen to know the lady that's living here, and she's given me permission to come and take pictures and video. So this is off the beaten path. This is going to be a story of the Christian Benner Farm here on Gettysburg Historic Walking Tours. Confederate soldiers would then tell the Benner family that they were going to place artillery up on the side of their hill. That would be here on Benner's Hill. This artillery would duel with Union artillery up on Culp's Hill on July 2nd and 3rd of 1863. Okay, I'm here at the Christian Benner Farm. Now this was a 208 acre family farm which occupied land just northeast of Culp's Hill and just south of the Hanover Road. Uh, the house itself is one of the oldest in Gettysburg. It was built in 1768. Uh, the barn is from 1801 and sits over there. Now Christian Benner Sr. It was one of the earliest settlers in the county. He arrived here in 1852, and then just a few years later built this house. Um, in 1863, this house was uh, in a it was actually used as a Confederate field hospital. Now, Benner occupied the farm here with his wife Susan Snyder and two sons. Um, Christian Jr. Uh, married Susan in the year 1829, and he would later die in 1879, uh, 52 years after his father, uh, who was one of the pioneers here of the house. Um, now, in July of 1863, Christian Benner's second son uh, had just celebrated his 19th birthday when the Battle of Gettysburg arrived here on July 1st of 1863 and in his reminiscences he talked about what had happened here on July 1st and July 2nd of 1863 and I'm going to read a little bit from what Christian son uh, wrote first on the first day of the battle um, he was uh, Christian Benner was plowing his fields on the morning of July 1st, 1863. Now, a man named Mr. Spangler came to the Benner farm to buy flour that morning. Fourteen barrels of it 
were loaded in a wagon, probably from the barn next door here, and Christian Benner agreed to take the flour to Mr. Spangler's warehouse, which was near the square in town. Now, as he reached the edge of his property, the first two shells of Union artillery were fired. By the time he got to the center of town and he met Mr. Spangler, uh, the, the skirmishes north and west of town had broken out, and Mr. Spangler told him to take his load back here to the farm. Um, now, Oliver Spangler um, had run from the house over towards Culp's Hill, which is in this direction. Now, Oliver's, uh, Oliver Spangler was 16 years old, um, and he climbed a tree and witnessed the battle commencing from Culp's Hill. Now, on the second day of uh, July of 1863, uh, Benner's son wrote, We saw the rebels driving our men across the open field to the woods. They yelled like mischief when they charged, and it was kind of an ugly yell. Soon the wounded began to be brought back. They laid them at the floor of our kitchen and up in the barn and out in the yard. Some were groaning and others would swear. The sight of the first wounded man was a dreadful one, but it was remarkable how one quickly gets hardened to such things. I seen a man with his leg sawed off and his head blown off and another one for that matter, and I was not disturbed after a while. I talked with a wounded North Carolina man, and he spoke sort, he spoke sort of regretfully of the war. After a while, the firing ceased, and three ambulances came to get the wounded at our place. A little major came into the house and asked for some red cloth to make a hospital flag to hang on the balcony, and that soldier climbed up a ladder, nailed it on the balcony near the roof, and that's where we're looking at now. On July 4th, we had found two dead rebels lying in the back of our barn, and no one came to bury them till the next day. Uh, Benner also would later say that he found a dead sharpshooter in a tree nearby, still buckled to the tree with his belt. So, uh, and this is also the area uh, over here on the Benner farm where it was most likely that Wesley Kopp was killed on the morning of July 3rd, 1863. Culp's Hill is just behind this barn, and then, of course, Wolf's Hill over here. And it was uh, Wesley Culp killed probably on the Benner property, not the Culp property, on the edge of Wolf's Hill in the distance uh, on July 3rd, 1863. And, of course, today the uh, Benner house looks like it's vacant. The barn that sits over there in the distance isn't in the greatest of shape. Um... And this property is private property, so uh, I spoke with uh, Mary Benner about uh, shooting video and taking some pictures out here. So, again, this has been the Christian Benner Farm uh, Confederate Field Hospital uh, on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. This is the barn that we talked about in the Christian Benner Farm Part 1. Uh, this is the barn where the two Confederate dead soldiers were laid behind. Um, I also noticed there's a carving here from like 1891. It says OBL, and then it looks like 1891. And that may be Oliver Benner, but it says OBL 1891 here on the side. Um, also, we talked about in the first video um, how Confederate soldiers were brought to the house here and laid in the kitchen, which is the uh, door that you see open over there. The house was abandoned. Um, the kitchen was later coated with a linoleum floor, um, but before the, the linoleum was placed down, you could still see blood stains inside of the kitchen on the floorboard and this is the kitchen floor here and as you can see it's a wreck
Yet yeah, this is one of the oldest houses in Gettysburg. Going back into the late 1700s. But witnessed so much history. And it's still very beautiful even in its decaying status. So this has been the Christian Benner Farm. And a few secrets and insights. Part 2 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Now it was in this area that Oliver Franklin Benner, who was born on July 14th, 1844 on the afternoon of July 2nd could hear the sound of chopping and he guessed that the soldiers were building breastworks up on Colts Hill. The farm fencing had been pulled down the day before. He was 20 or 30 feet from this fence when he discovered some men standing behind it. These were Confederate soldiers about to attack Culp's Hill. Some Confederate soldiers, most likely from the 23rd Virginia, were actually firing in and around the Christian Benner farm. And Oliver said that a bullet zipped right past his nose. After the battle, there were two dead rebels that laid on the back of the barn, and they were buried on July 5th. A neighbor, Mr. Zephaniah Tawney, came to the farm to get flour on Tuesday, July 2nd. Many thanks for watching this video of the Christian Benner Farm. This has been the Christian Benner Farm here on Gettysburg Historic Walking Tours, and I've been your historian, Frank Patrick Marone, Jr.